In this video, we're going to talk about the HTTP POST method. First of all, the purpose of the HTTP POST method is to create new resources on the server, right? which is different from the GET. GET is to get information, retrieve information from the server. The POST method is to create new resources on the server. So for creating new resources on the server, of course, we need to provide information from the client to the server provide the information about the resources that need to be created on the server. And typically, those information is provided by the HTTP body, right? the body part of the HTTP protocol. So let's jump into Visual Studio and let's create this basic routing in order to route to the correct endpoint handler. Okay, so previously we were checking whether the method is get. So let's actually close this. And then coming over here, we can say else if, or we can change to use switch, but let's continue to use if statement. So here, if the method is post, then I can decide something else. Over here, I wanna check which location. So after checking the method, we want to check on which location this action needs to be taken. So therefore, I'm going to use another if statement. And I'm going to say context.request.your.path if this starts with employees. So notice that I'm using the same location, get, right? So here, slash employees, here, slash employees. So location is the same. The difference is that method is different. This is, this one is the post method and this one is the get method. So when we use a post method, we end up on a different endpoint handling business here. So here we want to add a new employee to the in-memory data store, right, which is this list here. But first of all, we need to get the information that is posted over through the request and that is usually in the body, as I mentioned. So in this case, I want the client post JSON string over to the server. So therefore, I assume that everything is in the body and I need to parse that to a as JSON. So let's access the body object in the request over here. So I'm going to say request.body. And now you notice, if you hover the mouse over, you notice this is actually a stream. This is not a string. So you need to read it as a stream. So what we can do is we can declare a reader. So I'm going to say using var reader equals new stream reader. And then here I can put in the stream, which I'm going to move this over to here. And now we can use the reader dot read to the end, read to end async here. And I can use a away keyword. So now this one returns a string over here. Okay, so this one returns a task string, but when you use a wait keyword, it takes result out from the reader. So I'm going to say var body equals that. Okay. And everything after the wait keyword is a continuation. So I have another course regarding the multi-threading and asynchronous programming that helps you to understand asynchronous wait as well as traditional multi-threading programming. Okay, let's continue. So once we have the body, which is in a string format, we need to deserialize that into the employee object. Right? So what we can do is we can say JSON serializer, right? And then we can say deserialize and we can provide the type, which is employee. And then what should do is to deserialize the body string. This should return me a employee. And I'm gonna say employee, this is a new employee this employee needs to be added to this particular list. So therefore, let's go down to the memory data store here. Let's add another method to help us to add. So this is going to be a static method for sure. And then I'm going to say add employee and I'm going to provide the employee over here. Here I'm going to say employees dot add employee. OK, that's it. Let's go up here and let's use the employees repository. So employees repository dot add employee. And then I provide the employee right here. This will add it employee repository. So it has a green squiggly line here because this could be now, right? So therefore here I can modify that to add a question mark. And then we can say if and only if employee is not now, then we're going to actually add an employee to the list. And then when we scroll up here, you can see the green screen line is gone and we are able to add 
the employee into the in-memory data store without any problems. So again, this is a simple routine, which is done by a combination between the method and the path, the URL. And then we are deserializing the JSON from the body and we add that to our in-memory data store. All right. So let's, we want to give it a try, but we can't because we cannot send a post request from the browser, right? So how do we do that? Either we create a, a form somehow to test this, or we use a third party tool. So in this video, let's use Postman. So you can go to Google here, bring up a browser instance here, and then I'm going to say Postman. And now you can see the Postman right here, right? Click on it, download it if you haven't downloaded and install it. And once you install it, you can launch it from here. You can see Postman and I'm going to just run Postman. When Postman is launched for the first time, it asks you to log in, but logging in is optional. I currently log in with my Google account. And therefore, all of the previous requests that I created is, is listed right here. You don't have to log in, but if you don't log in, then you don't see your previous request. So now I can create a new collection and I can call it blank collection. And then I'm going to change the collection name to ASP.NET Core Deep Dive. Okay, it shows up right here. Now I can open it up and then I can click on this. I say add a request. And when I do that, it shows me this window. When it shows me this window, you see that this is actually very similar to the HTTP the request syntax. First, you need to provide a method. Secondly, you need to provide a URL and then you can provide headers down here. And the header is in the key value pair. So this is almost exactly the same as the syntax of the HTTP request. And in this case, we are not creating a get method. We're creating a post method. Open up this drop down, and then you can see all of the options right here. And in this case, we're creating a post method. And which URL are we targeting? Let's go over here. We can run it to see it. So let's run the application. And it is running right here. And we can copy this and go to Postman, paste it right here. Now, we don't need to specify any headers, but we do need to go to body and we need to specify the JSON body. To specify the JSON body, you can click on raw and then you can specify the format. So in this case, we are posting JSON. Okay. Typically when you submit a form, it's this one form data. But in our case, we are expecting JSON. Therefore, we're going to say raw and specify the format here. So JSON is basically key value pair and it's surrounded by a curly brace here. So we're expecting the employee object, which corresponds to this one. So ID, name, position, and salary. And I have to use double quotes right? and then a colon and then a double quote to provide the data. Well, for ID, it is an integer, so I don't have to have double quote, right? But let's go over here. We can see that existing ID is one, two, three. Let's avoid using existing ID. I'm going to say four and then I'm going to say comma. Okay. And now the second one is name, right? And I'm going to say my own name, Frank Liu. And the position, I'm going to say software developer and salary. I'm going to give myself a big number. I'm going to say a million dollars a year. How's, how about that? Well, I cannot make a lot of money. In reality, I'm going to make a lot of money here in Postman. <laughs> All right. So we have our data prepared and we have our application running. Okay. Now, I actually want to run this in debug mode. First of all, let's set a breakpoint right here and run it. And the first request is a get request. It's not going to come to this breakpoint, but let's use the postman to click on the send button. First of all, let's click on save button to save that to our collection here, right? And we can give it a name and right? we can say new employee or let's say add employee. Okay. And then click on the save button again and click on the send button. So once we do that, you can see that it recognizes this is a post request and then hover the mouse over its path. So this is the wrong location, right? So let's continue. It's not going to actually execute our code. So this is the wrong location. We have to say employees in order to actually hit our breakpoint. I actually execute our endpoint handling logic. So click on send button again. Now let's do 
F10. Now you can see that the if statement works here. We're going into this endpoint handling logic here. And then we're going to read the body and try to read everything into this body variable here. And if we open this, you can see that we actually have the JSON in our variable. And now we deserialize it into a employee object and you can see everything is properly uh, deserialized. And then let's run it. Okay. So you can see from the postman here, right? The top part is the request and the bottom part, the bottom half part is the response. We're going to talk about the response later. For now, at least you notice a green sign here. It indicates that we have a success, right? This particular post request comes back as a success. Now we have this guy running. Let's go to employees and see whether we can see the new employee. And we do. We have Frank right here. This is the one that we just Add it. Right? We can try to add another one. Actually, let's remove the breakpoint. We don't want to see it again. We know that it works. So instead of Frank Liu, let's add something else. Change the next ID and let's do this one. The Tom Anderson and this guy instead of a million, let's give it a hundred thousand. That's not a bad salary, anyways. And let's click on send. All right, we got a success here. And if we run the employees get right, we can get tom anderson back all right that's the end of this lesson in this lesson you learn to use the post request method and in order to actually uh, post something we installed postman and we learned to use postman we select the method we specify the url and we specify the body to post the JSON information. And what we did in our Visual Studio here is that we use a basic routing, right? A combination between the method and the path, which is the URL. And then we execute our endpoint handling logic here. We use stream reader to read information and then we deserialize it and we add it to the uh, repository, right? In fact, you can try to also create a get request here. You do this. Uh, add a new request to here, get the same thing, employees. This is to get all the employees. Right? And we don't have to specify the headers unless we need to specifically specify something. So if I click on the send button, then I get all of the employees back. Well, because I restarted the application, therefore I don't have Frank, I don't have Tom, I only have the initial three different employees. But you can see that we are able to use Postman to send different type of request. Okay, that's everything we want to cover in this video. If any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.